Hello everyone, welcome to another video of PSC programming using codices. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about the action qualifiers in SFC. So after watching this video, you will learn about the action qualifiers, which are used for the IEC actions, and also we'll learn how to provide time values for some qualifiers. As you can see here, the qualifiers are used with the IEC actions, and they are used to determine how the action should be executed. We have a couple of options for, for the qualifiers, as you see in the next slide. And for some of them, we need to determine the amount of the time delay or time value. And I, I will show you later how to specify that as well. Here you can see the available qualifiers for the actions in SFC for the IEC actions, which include N, R, S, L, D, P, S, D, D, S, and S, S. So nine in total. I'll go through all of them by one one and I will show you in the CADIS environment how these uh, affect the way in which the action is executed. Let's start with the first and simplest one, N, which stands for non-stored. And in the description, we can see that it is written, the action is active as long as the step is active. All right, so now let's switch to the codices and I will show you how it works. So here I have the kind of simple project. I have created a function block and I called it SFC underline action qualifier. And here you can see the way in which it is implemented. I have four steps here in it, step zero, step one, and step two, and some action. Initially, we will start from the init step. Then if enter step is becomes true, we'll enter into the step zero. And here we will see how the SFC action will be executed by changing this qualifier, which is initially set to N. And then we'll go out of this step and I'll explain you in the runtime the details. In the main program, PSC underline PRG, I have one instance of uh, this function block. In a simple visualization, I have placed some switches and with them I, did, I provide value for the entry step and exit step. And later for the uh, set action variable and reset action variable. So now let me log into the project and run it. Initially, you are here. If I provide enter step with this, we will enter into the step, and you will see that at the time during the time in which the step zero is active, SFC action will be true. And as soon as we go out of the step zero, it will become false. Again, we enter into the step, and then we go out of the. And each time you see that while step is true or while step is active, the action is true. And while it is deactivated, the action is false. So that's basically how the N qualifier works. Now let's switch to the next one. The next qualifier is R. And as you can see in the description, the action becomes deactivated. In other terms, the active the action will be reset. Uh, so in, in codices, I change this qualifier into R. So now it is a reset action. Initially, the action itself is false. If we enter into the step, at that moment, the action will be reset. And since it is already false, nothing changes, nothing happens. If you go, if the step is activated or deactivated, nothing happens in this case. But then if I set the action and I'll do it through here, now you can see that the action is true. The SFC action Boolean variable is true. And if I go out and enter into step zero again, as soon as I enter into it, the action will be reset. So that's the way in which the R qualifier works. Now let's switch to the next one, which is S qualifier stands for set or stored. As we can see in the description, the action will be started when the step becomes active and will be continued after the step is deactivated until the action is reset. As you can see here, I have changed the action qualifier to S. We are here in the init step. SFC action is, is false already. So let us enter into this step. And as soon as we enter, SFC action will become true. As long as we are there, we are in step zero, it is true. And even if we leave the step and don't reset the action, it will remain true. While it is true and we enter into this step, nothing will change. But if I enter here and then reset the action, and then go back to the init. Now SFC action is false. And again, if we enter into the step, it becomes true. If we exit, it remains true. So that's the way in which the S qualifier works. Now let's switch to the next one. The next qualifier is L, which stands for time limited. The action will be started when the step becomes active. It will continue until the step becomes inactive or a set time has passed. So I'm going to change the qualifier to L, 
But for this qualifier, we need to specify some some value in terms of the time. How long the ac the action should become should remain true, and then it becomes false. T pump then three seconds I specify. So again, we are in the init step. If I press enter step, we will enter into the step. The action becomes true, and it will remain true for three seconds, and then it it becomes false. Let's see it again. You can see the time here. So after three seconds, the action becomes false. During the first three seconds, action is is true. And if I enter into the step and leave before three seconds is over, the action goes to goes back to false. The next qualifier is D, which stands for time delayed. In the description, we can see that it is written. A delay timer will be started when the step becomes active. If the step is still active after the time delay, the action will start and continue until it is deactivated. So I changed the qualifier to D but kept the time as 3 seconds. You will see that after 3 seconds that step 0 is active, the action will become true. You can see the time here. When we reach 3 seconds, action becomes true and it, it is true, it remains true until we leave the step if we leave this step action becomes false if we enter into the step and then leave before that delay is over the action will remain false and that's what happens now so i left the step before the three seconds so that's the way in which the d qualifier works the next qualifier is p which stands for pause the action will be started when the step becomes active or deactive and will be executed once as you can see here, in this part of the code, I have placed an upcoming counter, which receives the count input from the SFC underline action, the same variable. Because as you will see, once we enter into this step, this action becomes true for a very short time. That's why we will not notice it here. We can see that its value becomes true and then false. But if we use it as the input to the upcounting counter, we will see that the count value or accumulated value of the counter will increase. I'm going to enter into this step. And as soon as I enter, pay attention to the accumulated value here. It will become, it should become one. And that's what happened. Accumulated value increased by one. Now I can exit this step. At the time that I exit, nothing happens. And then if I enter again, you see that the the, count, the, the accumulated value increased by one again. So basically in some places it is mentioned that this pulse will be generated while we enter and while we exit from the step. But what I observe here is that it happens only when we enter into the step, not when we exit from the step. The next action qualifier is SD, which stands for stored and time delay. The action will be started after the set time delay and it will continue until it is reset. I have changed the action qualifier to SD with the time delay of three seconds. We start from the init, we'll enter into the step and after three seconds, the action should become true. So after three seconds, action becomes true. Now, if we exit from the step, the action will remain true until we reset it. Now the SFC action is false. And if we enter again, after three seconds of entering, the action becomes true and it will remain true until again we reset the action. The next action qualifier is DS or delayed and stored. If the step is still active after the specified time delay, the action will start and it will continue until it is reset. In the case of DS, as we have it here, if we enter into the step and then we leave before the amount of the time delay, which is three seconds here is passed, the action will not be set. So let us see it. If we remain here for three seconds, after three seconds it is set, and then if we get out and come back, nothing changes until we reset the action and go back to the init. Now I'm going to enter into this step and then leave it before three seconds have passed. And now we see that the SFC action here doesn't become true. So that's the main difference between DS and SD. In the case of SD, the action will be set three seconds after we enter into the step. And even if we leave the step, it will become true. But in the case of DS, it will be the case only if we are still in the step. 
The last action qualifier is SL, which stands for Stored and Time Limit. The action will be started when the step becomes active and it will continue for the specified time or until a reset. I have changed the action qualifier to SL and have set 6 seconds as the time. I'm going to enter into the step. As soon as we enter to step, the action becomes true, it will be remain true for 6 seconds and then it will go off. Now if I exit the step and go back to it, as you can see the action doesn't become true anymore. And it's like this action qualifier is waiting for the action to be reset first and then it will be, it will act on it again. So let us see if it, if it works in that way. If I reset the action and then go back to the step with SL action qualifier again, you see that the action becomes true and it will remain true for 6 seconds. If I reset the action and go back to that step again, we see that the action becomes true. Now if I reset the action before 6 seconds is finished, the action becomes false. And if we go back to the step again, now the SL action qualifier will change the value of the SFC action again. All right, so that's all for this video. I kind of showed you, explained you all the possible action qualifiers that we have and how they are different. You have seen that for some of them, for L, D, S, D, D, S, and S, L, we need to provide time value and you have seen how to provide it. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video later. Bye for now.